Imagine you're working on your robot and you need to get a screw out. Your only tool? An Allen wrench. You insert it like so and try turning, but alas, the screw is too tight and won't budge. What happens if you insert the Allen wrench like this? Suddenly, it becomes much easier to get the screw out. The reason for this? Physics, specifically torque. Torque is the measure of the turning force on an object. The amount of torque can be calculated using the equation torque equals radius times force. By changing the orientation of the Allen wrench in the screw, the radius of the lever arm is increased. Even though the amount of force used is the same, the amount of torque has increased and you can now remove your screw with ease. Knowing about torque and how to calculate it can be extremely helpful when working on your robot. By measuring the length and amount of force needed, you can then find how much torque you need, allowing you to figure out how to power your robot's mechanisms. To measure the amount of torque, first find the amount of force. To do so, use a force probe where the force is perpendicular to the lever. Then, to measure the radius, we simply measure the length of the arm from the pivot to the end. Make sure to convert your final answer to meters. To calculate the torque, we multiply the amount of force by the length of the arm. Using this process, we can determine that our robot requires 3.04 newton meters of torque to raise up and score. Once you figure out how much torque your robot part needs, you then figure out how you want to power it. You'll most likely use motors, but depending on how much torque you need, the power of one motor just might not be enough. You can use another motor, but there's a 10 motor limit. Another option is to use gears. Depending on what size gears you use, you can either increase the amount of speed or the amount of torque. For example, take these two gears. Because the small gear I'm currently spinning has fewer teeth than the gear it's turning, the big gear will make less rotation than the small one as being geared for torque. On the other hand, if I'm turning the bigger gear with more teeth, the small gear makes more rotations than geared for speed. Depending on the torque required, you might choose to gear for speed or for torque. For example, on our robot this year, our arm is geared for torque with a 1 to 5 gear ratio. We chose to do this because raising our arm requires 3.04 newton meters of torque and thus requires more torque than just that from the motors on each side. Another place we use gear ratios on our robot is for the gears in our drive motors. Although we could have geared the drivetrain with external gears to make it more powerful or faster than with direct drive, we chose to do something different. Instead, we changed the internal gears of the motors. When you receive the motors, they're initially geared for torque. However, by changing the gears inside, you can configure them for speed. If you do so, remember to label the motors at high speed so as not to get them confused with the motors geared for torque. If you want the right balance of fast and strong, being able to calculate torque can be extremely useful.